Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast on this, our 28th day of our 33-day uh, journey to total consecration to our Lord Jesus Christ and his divine mercy with a lot of help from many people. Our Blessed Mother, primarily, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Maximilian Colby, St. Louis de Montfort, St. Therese of the Little Flower, St. Mother Teresa, and St. John Paul II. Um, not a bad crowd to hang out with, right? Not a, not a, a bad lot of people to associate ourselves with. Not just, not just today, not just for this little 33-day window, but we can identify with these great saints, these great people, every day. And that would really behoove us and help us mightily in all of our life's journeys. I mean, one of the primary goals of this consecration is to draw closer to our Lord. And when you associate yourself with people who we've known to have done that, it helps us to, you know, be among like-minded people to to share a common interest and a common goal and to be inspired to be like all of these great saints and our blessed mother trusting in god's mercy turning our life over to him let it be done to me according to your word the words of our great blessed mother we're just so fortunate to have these role models in our lives, these inspirational people in our lives. And, you know, we don't want to stop leaning on them at the end of our consecration. Oh, no. I mean, that's, that'll be the time when we're going to need them the most. And trust me, when we try to draw closer to God, the devil is fighting even harder to keep us away from God. So as we start to face the bigger storms ahead in life, which will come, we're going to need all the help we can get. And with that posse at our side, who are we to be afraid? You know, it's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful group of people to stay close to. Today, we uh, draw from St. John Paul II, who on the one-year anniversary of the attempt on his life went to Fatima and connected the dots between our Blessed Mother and her saving grace, who he credits with guiding the bullet and to not allowing it to be fatal to connecting Fatima to divine mercy and trusting that the two are inseparable. I mean, everything, everything in God's salvific history is connected. And we can draw parallels and lines between pretty much everything that's ever happened in the history of salvation but John Paul II really glued the two together the miracles of Fatima and our Blessed Mother because of the the messages the secrets of Fatima John Paul realized that it was him that they were they were talking about in that secret where the the bishop in white was assassinated, killed, but that vision wasn't a hard, fast reality, but through prayer and through the intervention of our Blessed Mother, a better outcome came, and the opportunity to bring everyone closer to God's love and God's mercy 
through the mercy that was shown to John Paul II in sparing him his life and allowing him to continue in his papacy, bringing more and more souls to Christ through the remaining years of his pontificate, drawing us ever closer to the merciful love of God, realizing it, understanding it, and celebrating it with our own lives. St. Therese overcame the darkness. Mother Teresa understood her own darkness and offered it up as a joining with our Lord on the cross. And that is the source of divine mercy. That fatal blow, the wound to Christ's side, piercing his heart, where wa water and blood flowed forth, bathing the world in his mercy. All the darkness, all the sins of all the world from Adam and Eve to the end of time, Jesus conquered on the cross, saying to us that there's no power in death and sin. The darkness has no power over me. I conquer that. I defeat it by my love and mercy. The love and mercy that flows from the side of Jesus in all of our wickedness, darkness, and sinfulness it doesn't measure anything close. It's but a dewdrop in the ocean of the mercy and love of God. We would be bragging if we thought that our sinfulness and our darkness in this world measured up to the love of God. Not even a chance. God's love and mercy far outweighs anything we can conjure up. Now that doesn't mean to say that we should try. I mean we don't need to add any darkness or bleakness or discouragement to this world. No. We need to reflect the light and the love of his mercy. We need to help amplify God's love with our lives, with what we do, with what we say. That's why we're here. We're here to amplify the love of God in our lives to everyone we encounter. That's the purpose of our consecration, to be instruments of mercy, to be instruments of love, everywhere we go. So on this, our 28th day, we look to Jesus on the cross and we see the mercy pouring out of his body, blood and water flowing from his side. Why, even the man who pierced his side, they call him Saint Longinus, named after his weapon, this Roman soldier was the first recipient of that divine mercy, that love that gushed forth from his side. And yes, that Roman soldier came to believe, was baptized, converted, changed his life, and became a saint, going around Jerusalem and proclaiming that Christ was God. St. Longinus, the first recipient of that divine mercy. Was he worthy? Are any of us worthy? God's love far outweighs anything dark, anything bad, anything evil. Evil stands no chance 
in the face of God's light and God's love. So let us pray today on our 28th day of our consecration journey. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, living in Mary, draw me in with and through Mary to the fountain of love and mercy that flows from her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come. Before thee I stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. And as we've been doing for these 28 days now, let us reflect and dive deep into God's love, the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Tomorrow, not only is it beginning our final five days of our journey to consecration, but it is a feast day tomorrow of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. The daily bread we receive in the Eucharist. Let us find help and power in that as we journey forward. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night and a blessed Sunday tomorrow. And may God's blessings fall upon you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a uh, great night and a blessed Sunday tomorrow. See you then, we pray. <laughs>